Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast as always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video guys, could a passenger be instructed to land a Boeing 737-800 only by instruction from air traffic control if that was the last option available? If all the pilots were gone, cabin crew were gone and you had access to the cockpit and you were the last resort. I'm going to give you about 20 steps that has to be done in order to get the aircraft safely down on the ground. But I want to emphasize at this point, guys, that this is just shown to reassure you, the nervous flyers out there, that it's possible. It is not to be seen as an instructional video and should under no circumstances be seen as such. Stay tuned. One, three, one, zero, one, six, one, right, one, right. Right guys, so um, first of all, welcome up to a very empty cockpit, okay? This is a flight uh, that is en route between London Stansted and Bremen in Germany. It's maintaining 21,000 feet and for whatever reasons the pilots are gone, cabin crew are gone and you were the last one standing. Kind of like in the horrible scenario with the Helios aircraft where the um, pressurization panel was incorrectly set and it rendered everyone on board except one person incapacitated. So the very first step that you will need to take is you will need to sit down in the cockpit and take a deep breath. Okay, It's very very important that you don't panic at this stage. So enter the cockpit sit down in the uh, first officer seat that would suggest and just look around you okay everything is calm there is no alarms bleeping or anything like that it's just flying the last kind of instruction that the pilots gave the aircraft before they uh, they disappeared so now the absolute first thing that you need to do after you've been sitting down is you need to find a headset okay because you need to start initiate some kind of contact with air con traffic control because I want to really emphasize this that without contact with air traffic control and without them finding someone that can help to guide you down this is going to be impossible so the headset will look like this you put it over your ears and you speak into this piece here put it like that at the moment when you put that on you're going to hear a lot of different chatter from other radio stations you won't understand what that means it doesn't matter the next step that you need to do is you need to talk to air traffic control on the designated emergency frequency now most airlines would have set up their radio frequencies to have the emergency frequency on standby on their second radio box so the first thing i wanted to do is look down on the center pedestal at the top right corner there's going to be a box with numbers in it now there is a big knob and a small knob that you can move around and what I want you to do is I want you to set 1 to 1 decimal 5 the frequency is 1 to 1 decimal 5 in between the windows on the radio box there is a little arrow switch if you push that after you've set the value that is going to make 1 to 1 5 the frequency to use there we go now this means that box number two, radio number two, is now set up for communication. But you still can't communicate unless you have set up the um, audio control panel. So if you go two steps down, there's a big kind of panel with loads of buttons with arrows on it. So what I want you to do is I want you to press the second one from the left, VHF2 it's called. You press that and put the arrow below it up to the mid position, up to the 12 o'clock position. This means that you now have the volume set correctly and you're now transmitting on the correct radio box. Okay? Now, if you go straight down from that arrow, there is a switch to the far left of the um, uh, control that says RT or EC. RT stands for radio transmission and IC stands for intercom. What you want to do is you want to toggle that switch to the RT position, to the radio transmit. Now, when you do this, you are going to transmit on the emergency frequency. So, the emergency frequency, 
uh, will reach all of the different stations, the tower frequencies, the controller frequencies and everything. So you obviously don't know what your call sign is. So what I want you to do is you, you will press it up and you tell them Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Say the name of the airline that you're flying for and say where you're coming from and where you're going to and that you're a passenger trying to fly the aircraft. So Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, my name is uh, Peter. Um, I'm a passenger on board uh, Mentor 360 Airlines and I'm flying from Stansted to Bremen. I'm a passenger and I don't know what to do. Something like that. That will immediately go out to our traffic control and they will now you know, try to contact you by your name and tell you a little bit what to do. So that's step number one. Sit down and establish radio communication. To the left of this box, there is an, another radio box with four numerical numbers in it. You can say anything. Uh, it should have a little button in between that says ATC. Now, there are two knobs on each side of the ATC button. If you move them, the numerical numbers will change. This is the transponder. And what you want to do is you want to squawk, as in you want to change the numbers in there to 7700. Now your radio echo for air traffic control will be seen as an emergency frequency, an emergency flight, and it will be easier for them to find you. So step number two is we need to now get control of what the aircraft is doing. Air traffic control is likely going to want to know how far away you are from a landable airport and how much fuel you have. So what of all of these screens, on the middle screen in the bottom right corner, there are either a set of, of uh, fuel indicators or like in this case a total fuel announced. So tell air traffic control when you see them that uh, it's Petter again, uh, we have 4.5 tons of fuel on board. Because that will give air traffic control an idea of how much time you have. This up here is the panel that controls the autopilot of the aircraft. You are going to want to get the aircraft down in order to be able to start an approach. If you look from the right to left here, these are the core selectors. We're going to talk more about those later on because they will be important. There is a big altitude window. That altitude window tells the autopilot what altitude it should be flying to. To the left of that, there's a heading window. These two, air traffic control is going to want to tell you what to set in. All right? So in this case, we are flying over uh, the English Channel at the moment and air traffic control wants us to go back to Stansted. So they will then tell you to put the altitude window down to maybe 3,000 feet because there's no terrain around, there's no mountains around. You take this big uh, knob up here, 3,000 feet. Now, as you might notice, there are some lights coming on. That's because the aircraft was not expecting to descend here. You can completely disregard these lights for now. So 3,000 feet and you would see that the altitude hall, the alt held uh, button illuminates under here. That's completely normal, just telling that the aircraft is maintaining the altitude. So, it's not descending at the moment. You're going to have to tell the aircraft to descend. And the way to do that is these buttons over here. So, you either have altitude hold, which is just maintaining the altitude, vertical speed, which, is this, which tells the aircraft how quickly it should descend, or the one we are going to use is something called LVLCHD, which stands for level change. If you press that, it means that the aircraft is going to reduce the thrust and it's going to follow the speed it has now in order to achieve the altitude. So 3000 feet, you press level change. And as you can see, the thrust is now coming back and the aircraft is starting to descend over here. So it's now achieving what you want it to. The second thing you want to do is, at the moment, the aircraft is following its track towards Bremen. And we don't want to do that. We want to go back to Stansted. So our traffic control is once again going to come in and tell you, Peter, are you there? Yes. Uh, I we want you to try to turn the aircraft. Now, in the middle of the mode control panel, you have a, heading, uh, you have a window called heading. That has a numerical numbers inside of it, three of them, and it goes from 0 to 359. They will probably tell you to turn to a certain numerical number. So in this case, they're going to tell you to turn 
to heading 270. So we just turn this knob until it says 270. And once you've done that, you go down and you press heading select. So as you notice now, the aircraft is starting to turn. Okay. So the aircraft is basically doing what you're telling it now. So you're doing a great job. At the moment, you're both controlling the altitude of the aircraft and you're turning using the heading bug in a direction that air traffic control wants you to turn. Like I was saying, the aircraft is now descending following a certain speed. It's the speed that we've told it to. Now that speed, at the moment, you can see in this window here. It says IAS Mach. So it's either an indicated airspeed or a Mach number. So if you've taken over the aircraft at a high altitude, this might show a decimal figure instead. So it's showing you a Mach number. In that case, you just press change over, CO here, and it will show you an American number like this. Because what we want to do is we want to fly a, uh, an indicated airspeed because it's going to be easier later on when we have to start configuring the aircraft for landing. So air traffic control will now come in and tell you that you need to turn a little bit more to the left and it will tell you a new numerical figure, so 260 in this case. So you just turn that and the aircraft is doing exactly what you tell it to. Now, you have a little bit of time here. So I would suggest that while we're en route now, descending down towards our destination and on the heading we want, you'd start to prepare yourself. So you're sitting in the seat. There will be a little age lever, a lever on the left hand side, which has H on it for hotel. If you pull that up, you'll be able to move your seat like this. Put it in a position where you can sit comfortably and you can put both feet on the rudder pedals. Okay? So there will be rudder pedals here underneath. If you can't move them, there's a little crank between that can move the pedals in and out. You can use that in order to put a good position. But just put it like that, because the reason for that is that once we get down on the ground, the, re the way that you keep the aircraft on the center line, on the runway, is going to be with your rudders. So you're, st you're steering it like you do with you know, one of those old like model cars that you used to do a drive when you were small. You're just using your feet to keep the center line, okay? So keep it like that. Just make sure that you're sitting correctly. Put your seat belt on. Like that. And if you want to see more about how, a, uh, how the, the um, pilot seat works, there's a link up here for that. Okay, I've done a video on that before. All right, so if we look at this picture now, it's going to show a map picture. It's not going to make much sense to you, so don't worry too much about that. On the right hand side, you can see your altitude. And on the left hand side, you can see your airspeed. It is possible that air traffic control is going to want to ask you what your speed and your altitude is. So we're continuing to descend. Anytime that air traffic control is asking for you, telling you your name, use that little button on your mode control panel that says RT and you transmit using that. Okay. There is a way to transmit using a button on your yoke, but I don't want you to touch the yoke unless you absolutely have to because there are risks associated with that, including uh, disconnecting the autopilot. So use the RT switch when you want to talk to them. Now, on our way in towards Stansted now, um, air traffic control is going to help you to set up the aircraft radios in order to do an auto land. So um, they are going to tell you that you need to set a couple of different frequencies up and that you need to set two courses up. Those are the main things. So if we start with the frequencies, if you go down to the center pedal again, below the radio box that you were setting, there's another box with two windows in it. That's your radio two, and there's an identical one on the left-hand side as well. In this case, air traffic control will gonna tell you to put 110.5 on both of these radio boxes, 110.5, and push the, the uh, arrow button in between that says TFR, so that's for transfer. Push that so you see 110.5 in the left hand window of both of these. Okay? This means that the ILS frequency, the outer land frequency we're going to use, is now active. The next step is we need to tell the autopilot what the course towards the runway is. And those are these two. So they are corresponding with the two radio boxes. 
So in this case, it's actually preset because they departed from that runway. So they wanted to set 223 in course 2 and 223 in course 1. That way, we know that the aircraft is now set up for the correct frequency and the correct inbound course for the ILS. So now we're down to 3,000 feet. The problem here is that we are way too fast. If air traffic control asks you what speed you're keeping, you're keeping 286 knots here. And that is not the speed that we can use for landing. 2,500. That's the uh, aircraft telling us that we're 2,500 feet above the ground, which is normal because we're 3,000 feet indicated. So what you want to do now is go up to the speed window that says IS Mac and bring that back to the value that air traffic control tells you. So in this case, we're going to bring it back to 210. The trust levels will come back and you will see up here on the um, speed window that the speed is starting to decrease. Because what we need to do now is we need to start configuring the aircraft to be able to land. All right. So right now you're doing great. If you're at this position, you're down at the altitude, you're pointing the right way, the aircraft is set up for the outer land. So next step now is that air traffic control is going to want to start to slow you down even further. Okay. So what you want to do is when the speed has come back to about this magenta bug that you've set, that's going to be 210 knots, there's a flap lever here. These are the truss levers that controls the engine. On the right hand side is a flap lever that controls the flaps that are going out on the back of the aircraft to help us slow down and land. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the flap and you want to leave, you want to move it to the five position. So move it one, two, five. The trim will move, that's the autopilot doing its job. Do not worry about that. Wait maybe 20 seconds like this. And then bring the speed back to approximately 180 knots to start with. That way you will always be safe. Okay, 180 knots. Good. The aircraft is now slowing down more and more. Now, when we have the chance here, we have a little bit more time over. Uh, there is a couple of things that we want to make sure that the aircraft is doing. After the landing, we want the aircraft to stop by itself. The way that we make sure that that happens is by doing two things. Above the center screen here, there is a knob called auto brake. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It will tell you how to auto brake the aircraft. Bring that to the number three. The next thing is on the left side of the, um, uh, of the thrust levers, there's a little handle called speed brake. Now what you want to do is you want to lift that up and move it a little bit back, as in it's just like it's resting on a ledge. So you lift it up and then you move it back a little bit. I'll show you that again. Lift it up and back a little bit, very little, so that it rests on a ledge like that. Okay. So, we're getting closer. Air traffic control wants us to, um, to start getting ready to intercept the localizer. Now, you don't know what that means, obviously. In this case, first of all, they tell us to turn a little bit right to heading 270 degrees again. The aircraft has flaps five. It's at 180 knots. It's at 3,000 feet. The outer brake is set up. The speed brake is set up. Flaps are coming out. So, the next thing to do now is they're going to tell us that we are cleared for the approach okay and what you need to do then and this is crucial guys in the middle of the mode control panel that con that uh, controls the autopilot there are three switches LNAV, Vorlock and Approach in this case we're still very far out but in this case what you want to do is you want to press Approach Anytime you press a button here and it illuminates green here, it means that it's a mode that has engaged and can be disengaged. Okay, so in this case, when you see approach green, then, and this is very important guys, you need to go up and on this panel up here, there are four switches called CMD, CMD, CVS, CVS. One of them is already illuminated. That's indicating the autopilot that's currently flying the aircraft. Now, 
What you want to do in order for the aircraft to be able to outer land is you want to illuminate the second autopilot again as well. Do not press the one that's already green because if you do, that disengages the autopilot and the, auto the aircraft is now flying manually. So you want to make sure that you do not press the one that is illuminated but the other one. So what you want to see is two green lights, not one. So press that. Now the aircraft is set to approach and we have both command A and com command B engaged. So autopilot is set up. So now really the aircraft will capture both the localizer that will guide it towards the runway and the glide slope that will make it descend. So the next things that we need to do now is we need to continue to configure the aircraft to bring the airspeed back to make sure that it is safe to land. We're still pretty far out, so at this point you can probably reduce the speed a little bit further to maybe 170 knots or so. Uh, you will see on your airspeed indicator here some indicators, like in this case 1 and 5. That indicates the lowest speed that you're allowed to fly with the current flap setting. So as long as you, don't, as you move the airspeed uh, bug above the minimum speed, the aircraft is safe and it's not going to fall down. Okay? You need to start anticipating what will happen. When the aircraft hits the localizer, it's going to suddenly start turning. Now, this is completely normal. Um, this is something, you know, basically the aircraft is now following a guidance towards the runway, so don't be afraid when that happens. Subsequently, it will also capture a glide slope, which means that it will start to pitch down. All of these things, you have to be aware that it's going to happen and don't let it scare you, okay? Very important. So, right now, we are getting localized to capture. So, as I was saying, the aircraft is now turning. It might feel quite violent. You do not have to be afraid. This is completely normal. Now, the aircraft is tracking the localizer, okay? Back at 170 knots, the aircraft is turning now straight towards the runway and we're getting closer to a landing position. So, the next thing we want to do now is we want to continue to, continue to configure the aircraft for landing. And this is something we would do quite close to the runway, but since you're doing this for the first and hopefully only time, then we are going to do it a little bit further out. So, the next we need to do in order to be able to land is get the landing gear down. So, the landing gear is this big uh, lever here in the middle of the cockpit. It has a little gear on it, it's easy to, to find. And what you want to do is you want to take that and move it down. You're going to feel how the, the um, gear comes out. You're going to hear that there's a large like rumbling noise coming. That's from the, from the um, air rushing past the gear. And after a while, three green lights is going to appear. That means that the gear is down and locked. Now, you can continue to take flaps into a landing flap configuration, which is going to be the max flap in this case. So, air traffic control will tell you to slow down. And in that case, you move the flap to 15. When you move it to 15, you go up and remember where the speed is on the MCP. The speed needs to come back and you see the 15 bug here on the um, uh, primary flight display. Just put the speed bug over the 15, it's going to be around 155. Next thing is to take the flaps into the landing flap position. So, flaps all the way down to 40 and bring the speed back to something like 145. Now, the reason that you don't know exactly what speed to set is because you have not set anything up in the computer, the aircraft computer. It is not needed, okay? That is needed when we do this, when we fly commercially. However, in the situation you're in now, the aircraft is going to do a fine job even without the, um, the FMC, the computer being set up. So, the situation you're in right now is that the autopilot is flying, two, two autopilots controlling the aircraft. The gear is down, the flaps are 40, the speed is back, the outer brake is set for landing, the speed brake is armed, everything is set, okay? Remember to continue to talk to air traffic control. You know, if they're asking for something, they should tell you where to look. So you should, you know, you should get guidance from this. 
and tell them that the aircraft is now completely set up for landing and to have all emergency equipment standing by upon landing. So we're now 10 nautical miles away from the landing runway. There's a little uh, figure up here that is counting down. That's the, uh, the DME. And you can just start to see the runway out through the window. So at this point, everything is set perfectly. We're just waiting for the aircraft to be established on the glide slope now. And once again, I want to emphasize that after landing, the aircraft will not be able to the aircraft will not be able to control itself on the runway. So you need to use your rudder pedals to just make sure that you stay on the asphalt. Doesn't matter how nice it looks, but be careful not to do too big corrections because it's quite sensitive. So nice, small corrections, kind of squeezing the rudder pedals in the direction you want to go. Try not to overcorrect. And there is brakes on the top of the toes. Don't press them, okay? Because you have told the aircraft to brake by itself, so if you press those pedals, it's going to disengage the, um, the outer brake and the aircraft will not brake by itself. You're going to have to brake yourself. So just use the lower part of the pedals, move them in a way that, that keeps the aircraft going down. Right, so as you notice now, the nose is pitching down. That's because the aircraft has just captured the glide slope. So now it is fly flying down towards the runway, tracking the um, center line, tracking the guide slope, the speed is correct, everything is set perfectly now. So in essence, at this point, you only need to sit and wait for the aircraft to do the job. So let's see what happens. And as you can see, this is a very smooth maneuver. And that's because you have already preset everything that needs to be set up. So when we get down on the ground now, just make sure the aircraft comes to a safe stop on the runway. We are going to... 1,000. That's the aircraft telling us that we are 1,000 feet above the, um, the ground. It's taking that off the radio altimeter that you have up here in the uh, right side of the primary flight display. And when we get down, we're just going to shut down the engines and from there we're going to let the cabin crew take over or let the um, emergency uh, two, two. vehicles take over. So as we're getting closer now, put your feet on the rudder pedals. That's the aircraft trimming back in order to enable the flare and also to enable a go around. Obviously, we will not go around from this. We have to get this aircraft down on the ground. There we are. The aircraft has landed. Now we would take reverses in this case, which are these levers up here. It's not really needed in this case. So we're landing on Stansted. And as you can see, the aircraft is following the center line quite well. It's not too much wind, but I use the rudder pedals slightly here just to maintain the center line and let the aircraft come down to a complete stop. And there we are. The aircraft has stopped. The aircraft, this is one piece. You've managed to get the aircraft down on the ground. What we want to do now is we want to make sure that the emergency personnel can come and help us out. Um, so what you want to do next is just kill the engines. And you do that with these two buttons up here. Uh, that takes away the fuel from the engines. So when you do that, the aircraft is going to go dark. Um, so it's going to be quite dark in the cabin as well. You're going to get some emergency lighting coming up. Don't be afraid. That's perfectly normal. But you're enabling the, um, the rescue equipment to come up. So that's what we'll do now. And that sound is the autopilot disconnecting because it would still connect it at that point. So right now, 
You've saved the aircraft. The aircraft is down on the ground. The engines are shut off. Merce equipment can come on, help everyone that's on board, and you've made a fantastic job. That alarm is the uh, IRS is saying that they're on battery power. It's completely normal because the aircraft is, uh, is without engines at this point. So guys, that's what I wanted to show you. I want to show you that it is perfectly possible. However, there are several steps that needs to be done in the right order in order to do so. Now, if you want a quick version of this, with all of the steps, it's available inside of the Mentor Aviation app, okay? So you can download it if you want to keep it on your phone, if, it feels, if you're a nervous flyer and you feel like you want to have a guide like this with you, well then that's available inside of the Mentor Aviation app. You can download the app for free. The video is gonna cost a few euros because it costs a bit to produce, but you can get it and you can take it with you, okay? Um, if you like videos like this, make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and that you have highlighted the notification bell. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.